Welcome back to the Band Guide. I'm your Band Guide, Colin, and this is another five minute GarageBand expert where I'm bringing you 30 tips and tricks for mixing and recording in GarageBand in 30 days. Today, I want to answer maybe the most common question I get about recording, and that's what volume should I be recording? This is a really important question and one that there's kind of a right answer for. There's two parts to this answer. So the first part is more a something you have to avoid, something you cannot do at all costs, something you can't really come back from. The second is more about ideal levels, ideal ranges. So the first, let's address first. The first is something you cannot come back from, and that's clipping. If you record too loud and your signal clips, you can't come back from that. There's just no real way to come back from that. Clipping just means that, you know, on your meter here, it's usually green and then yellow and then red. Once you really hit that red at the absolute top of that meter, you're hitting that top of that meter, it has nowhere else to go. So when you imagine a waveform, all audio is waveforms. And a waveform is basically a semicircle up and a semicircle down. And when it gets too big, too loud, that semicircle just gets cut off. It just gets clipped off, clipping. And that audio is just gone. There's no way to recover it. So it sounds really, really bad. We have to avoid that at all costs. That has to be our number one goal when we're setting our levels, is to never be too, too loud. There's many ways that we can turn down a signal if it's loud, but it's not clipping. And there's many ways that we can turn up a signal if it's too quiet. Now this doesn't mean just record at the softest volume possible, and there's really two reasons for that. The first reason is that we need to be able to see our audio in our session. So GarageBand doesn't allow us to change the size of our waveforms. So to be able to move around our session and see different things that we've recorded, we wanna make sure that we're recording at a healthy level. But that doesn't mean record really, really hot. That just means record at a healthy level. GarageBand has kind of set this up in an ideal way. We'll get into that in just a second. So the second thing I mentioned is the ideal level, right? What is the ideal level to be recording? Now this goes back to kind of analog days. So in analog days, we have a VU meter, like is up on the screen right here. A VU meter, it would not be calibrated to zero being the absolute highest level, the zero that's on our meter here, the top of our meter, that's zero in our recording software is different on a VU meter. The zero on a VU meter is what's called negative 18 dBFS, decibels full scale. And what that means is that this zero is actually negative 18 decibels. It's 18 decibels quieter than the highest point that we could reach where we'd start getting clipping. So when we're aiming for zero on a VU meter, that's just set on a standard setting, this negative 18 setting, we're actually 18 decibels lower. And that carried over. So in old analog days, they'd aim for that level, and then they would design other equipment around things being aimed for that level. And that carried over when we started creating plugins and digital audio, that plugins have to have kind of a range that it is expecting audio to come in for, and presets. So if you wanted to pull up a vocal preset or a specific preset on an instrument, those presets are also likely going to be around negative 18 dBFS. There might be some times where that's not the case, but for the most part, that's gonna be the case. So negative 18 dBFS is gonna be your goal range, your ideal range. How do we record this? So what I would recommend, there's no great way to see this specifically in GarageBand. So I would recommend grabbing this plugin. It's completely free. I'll link to it in the description below. And you can download this, put it on your session. It will default to having this negative 18. And then let's listen to this example here. So this example on this guitar, you know, it goes a little bit past there and it hovers below, but for the most part, we're hovering around negative zero here, or zero here. And that's okay. When we're going two decibels over at negative 18, that's not peaking, that's not clipping, that's only negative 16 decibels. So that's still a safe range. So you want to have dynamic range. You don't want to only ever be hovering right at that zero. That would have no dynamic range, but you want to be hovering around that zero. Let's look at a, a vocal here as well. It's like they're calling your name on the way back home. You never get it over it. So this vocal only ever hits about four decibels beyond the zero. That's still an okay range because that's only was it negative 14 decibels? So we're still way below that zero we're gonna start getting peaking. And we're still operating kind of around zero, so it's still gonna be 
uh, optimal range. Now, let's say you, your recording doesn't have any sort of peaking, doesn't clip at all, but is just a little bit higher. It's operating consistently up in this four or five decibel range. Well, this plugin, you can just turn this vocal down. So let's say like if we were up here all the time, the we could just turn this down four or five decibels and we'd be in a safe range. And now any plugin after that will be turned down as well. So it's not gonna affect the way this looks, but as soon as it hits here, it'll be turned down four decibels and then any plugin after it will be in that optimal range. So very simple tip, not a huge tip, but a really, really important tip for getting really professional sounding recordings. Don't obsess over this. For the most part, just make sure you're never clipping, especially if you're recording on iPad, you can't download this plugin. Just make sure you're recording at a safe level and never clipping. But if you wanna go for that optimal level, download this plugin, try to aim for this, specifically on your main sources, any sort of lead vocals, anything like that, aim for negative 18 dBFS and you'll be golden. Okay, if you're this serious about getting a professional sounding recording, you made it all the way to the end of a video about recording level, I know you're really, really serious. And that means that you're also serious about getting a professional sounding song in general, getting a professional sounding mix. And I wanna give you something to help with that. I put together a six step checklist to a pro mix inside GarageBand. It's completely free. I'll link to it in the description below. Just walks through goals at every step of the six steps to a pro mix in GarageBand and lets you know exactly what you should be doing. So be sure to grab a copy of that. It's completely free from the link in the description below. It will really help you get a professional sounding mix in GarageBand. If this video was helpful to you, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.